why you should never date an artist. A guide to some of those that you should avoid in the creative universe, starting with one, conceptual artists. Their art is the only art in our postmodern age. They'll give you credit for respecting their work because you must be truly visionary to get it. But they'll also make you feel like your work is less meaningful because it's more light or more humorous or, God forbid, commercial. Yet they become hugely successful, going to these fabulous parties where they hang out with peaches and fantasize about motherhood together. They'll say that parties are part of work, then stop inviting you before leaving you for one of the fabulous people at the fabulous parties. Two, musicians. They have an intense relationship already with their instrument. They will either be in so many bands that their time is insanely stretched, or they'll be in a band that you refer to as the band. And if you ever dare say, it's me or the band, the answer is more likely to be the band than you. Their connection with the band, it makes you jealous. So you go to as many gigs as you can until you know the set as well, if not better than the band, who sometimes are so drunk, they can just about remember the songs. And then they'll be touring. And they'll be that one girl after that one gig. Or maybe there'll be a few girls, after a few gigs. And after many girls, and many gigs, and, and many tours, your musician will leave you for one of them, or for the band. Three, poets. Oh my dears, steer well clear. They're dreamy, they're moody, they're intense. Or, if you're really lucky, they're all these things at once. They feed on the highs and lows of human emotion, but they are so charming in this way that curls around your skin. But they're all alcoholics, worse than the musicians. Seriously, they will definitely drink more than you. But you love words, and they make them sound so good, and that's so hot, and they're all fantastic in bed. So much so you forget their flaws, thinking, I can work around them, but the mood swings, the jealousy, the intensity will haunt you between those multi-orgasmic sexual marathons. And then one day your poet receives a compliment from someone in the audience of a spoken word event who tells poet, your work is awesome, I've seen you a few times. Poet takes her number, then maybe <gasps> takes it further. And then when you next see them, they say, I can't handle being in a relationship. It's draining. It's affecting my writing. I've stopped writing. I need to be on my own to focus. And then, when you next see them, you see that, yes, they can handle being in a relationship, but the girl they make that exception for will not be you. So, you've had enough. You go on a date with an accountant. You go on a date with a brain surgeon. You go on a date with a social worker, but it's not working. You're going to give up altogether, and then you meet the web developer, who is chilled out and totally into you, who may be able to make you a website. It's almost too good to be true. But you miss having debates about Turner Prize winners and one at a dinner you wish that they would suggest a book for you to read for a change. You invite them to go to Wolfgang Tillman's show at the Tate and they don't want to go. So you go on your own and you sit by yourself in the cafe. The person who sits next to you says, what are you writing in your notebook? And you're like, well, what are you drawing in yours? And honestly, you didn't see it coming. Before you know it, it's the sixth time you're meeting. You spend late night after late night in some French wine bar trading opinions on everything from post-traumatic theater to Bauhaus architecture. You're both crazy about Bukowski and Baldwin, but unconvinced by Laurie Anderson. And before you know it, you've left the web developer for an illustrator. And the affair doesn't last, but who cares? Because now you know you are doomed to keep dating artists.